For the second part of 10.4, looking at inscribed angles, we're going to focus on the second definition of inscribed angles. You recall from day one, if you look at the measure of the angle formed by a tangent and a chord, it's one half the measure of the intercepted arc. So let's take a look in more detail at this picture. The tangent, remember, is the line that touches the circle at just one location. So that's your tangent line. The chord also has an angle or has a point on the circle but connects to another point on the circle. So that would be the chord. So remember, by definition, the measure of the angle is going to be one half the measure of the intercepted arc. And the intercepted arc for angle A, B, D would be the arc that goes in between the tangent and the chord. So that's one half measure of arc B, D. And that would be your arc value. Now go to the second page and we'll go through the rest of the problems. On page two of the 10.4 notes, we're gonna go all the way down to the bottom to example four. Given BD is tangent to circle P at point C, if the measure of arc AC is 88, what is the measure of angle ACB? So let's take a look at the picture. It says BD is tangent, so take a look at that tangent line. You see that like so? And then it says the measure of arc AC is 88. So that would be your arc measure. On the picture from A to C on the circle itself, that arc is 88 degrees. And that's pretty messy, so let's fix that. Sorry, it is 88 degrees, but I don't want it to be so scribbly all over there. So if we connect A to C like so, that's 88 degrees, there we go. Then it says, what is the measure of angle A, C, B? Looking at the picture from A down to C is a chord. So then from A to C over to B is the inscribed angle formed by the tangent and the chord. By definition, the measure of angle ACB, now remember that's an angle because it has that angle symbol. That's just gonna be one half the measure of the intercepted arc. And that's AC. Now the arc is 88 degrees. Therefore, if we take half of that, we get the measure of angle ABC or ACB, excuse me, to be 44, and our label is degrees. All right, then it says if EG down below is tangent at point F, and the measure of angle GFC is 115, what's the measure of angle arc FAC? So let's take a look at this picture. It says EG is tangent, okay, we see that on the picture, but then it also says that the measure of angle A or GFC is 115. So from G to F over to C, that's 115, that angle measure. What is the measure of arc FAC? So now we're gonna go from F all the way up and over to A, including over to C over here on that right. So if we're trying to find the arc measure, then we're going to do what we did in day one. Arcs are always twice as big as the angle. Therefore, if we take two times 115, the measure of arc FAC would equal 230 degrees. Please turn to page three and we'll finish the lesson. Let's take a look at example five. Segment BD is tangent to circle A at point D. The measure of arc DFE equals 134 degrees. So that's an arc measure. What is the measure of angle BDE? So we want to find an angle measure. On the picture, let's take a look at arc DFE. From D all the way to F, and then up over to E. That's our arc measure. It's 134 degrees. And we're trying to find the measure of angle BDE. So from B over to D, 
up to E. That's the inscribed angle formed by a tangent and a chord. By definition, the measure of angle BDE, which is again an angle, again, we're just trying to practice recognizing which order we do things, that should be equal to half the intercepted arc. And we know it's an arc. Even though it uses three letters, I'm not quite sure why they chose to use three letters on this, it's less than 180. But that does help us indicate direction. So from D, F, E on the right, and that, ink, that arc is 134 degrees. Therefore, if we take half of that, the measure of angle B, D, E would equal 67 degrees. Okay, let's try one more. Taking a look at example six. And it says number four. That should be a six. We're just going to cross that off. <laughs> Given line W, Y is tangent at, point, or at circle C at point X, what is the measure of arc X, Z? So let's take a look at what we know on the picture. I see that inscribed angle Y, X, Z is 50 degrees. Therefore, the measure of the arc, because the arc is always bigger, that's going to be twice the measure of angle Y, X, Z. So the arc we're trying to solve for is twice as big as the angle for the inscribed angle which is twice 50 degrees, or two times 50 degrees, twice. Two times 50 degrees, which would be 100. Pretty quick. Then it says, what is the measure of angle VXW? So now we want the value on the other side. We're gonna have to do a little bit of detective work to figure this out, everybody. If we want the measure of angle VXW, that's this angle over here on the right side. But to get that, we need to know the arc from V to X. So if we take 360 minus the 100 for arc XZ minus the 196 for Z to V, we would get an arc value of 64 degrees. So that would be the measure of arc XV, 64 degrees. Therefore, the measure of angle VXW, which is again an angle, would equal one half the measure of its intercepted arc, XV. Can you guys see that on the picture? So from X to V on the curve, that's 64 degrees. But if we take half of that, we would get the measure of angle VXW to equal 32 degrees. And that's the second part of lesson 10.4. We're still either multiplying by one half or multiplying by two. You just have to decide if you're finding an angle or finding an arc.